Oh, it's recording. Shalom. This is Holiday, HolidayJohnson.com. Um, this is quarantine style. I wash my face though. And um, but and I had this on earlier. It's my little bun bonnet that I sleep in. And then I was like, well, instead of giving muffin top, let's give them wake up here. Um, okay, so I'm glad. Forgive me. Uh for those of you who, I guess, come back to the channel if I haven't posted anything, but um, I'm just going with the conviction today to go ahead and post something and uh, and just try to remain present and, <clears throat> and consistent. I have a formula that I use on a daily basis that, um, that just that, that happened in uh, my time of fellowship or communion with Father, and he gave me... Like it was one of my, it was my, well, it was my idea to just show God that I wanted to worship him first thing in the morning, every day, make that my business. And, um, and he gave me a formula to do that. I decided that, you know, whether I actually approached it from a very scientific journalistic standpoint and decided that, um, I wanted to live, <laughs> excuse me, I need to, I guess I should get some water. No, I can't get up right now. But, um, <clears throat> But I wanted, I made a decision, like I wanted to show God that he is my first priority every day, all day. Like I wanted him to know in a very tangible way. Um, and even for myself, like to know, okay, God, am I, I don't want to just say Matthew 6, which says um, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. It's when Jesus was, was talking to his disciples and, and telling, you know, they were concerned about what tomorrow looks like and what today, what's happening today and the future and their security, all those things. They were concerned about those things, like what they're going to wear, what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink. What about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? <sighs> Interesting theme. It seems like it's happening today, right? What about tomorrow? But um, Jesus comforted them and said, hey, you know, those that don't follow me or those that or of heathen, like people that don't know me are worried about those things. And um, you don't have to just make God your first priority every day. And I, um, and then he, all those things will be added. Like you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, all those things, like your security, none of that. Just go to father first and, and you'll be, um, you'll, you'll, you'll be taken care of. So like, see God first. I heard that again. See God first. Um, instead of mammon first. So seek God first instead of mammon. So I wanted to put this thing to the test and really try it. And, um, and I approached it from my journal with my journalistic hat, from a journalistic scientific perspective. That's how I approached it. Um, I approached it from that angle. And um, so from when I say from that angle, it wasn't based on feelings. It wasn't based on, um, whether or not somebody liked me or what, you know, none of those things. I just really wanted to put that word into action and um, test him at his word. And um, and so as a result of that, I decided that he would always be my first morning, excuse me, my first meeting in the morning. So no matter what time, the first thing in the morning, whenever I wake up, it was like me, God, me, God, me, you know, like me and God, me and God. He's always my first meeting. So and even if our meeting lasted three minutes or 30 seconds or <laughs> three days, three hours, whatever the case is, I decided that I would always make him first in the morning. So making him my first priority, that was my way of showing him that you're my first priority. And so um, as a result of that, I discovered that... Um, Wow, you know, there were days where we we got up and it was like I it was 10, 10 minutes and then I went about the day and went into my love work, my kingdom work and then excuse me, my love work, my marketplace work and then my housework. I followed and followed all priorities. But it's interesting what I found out of that those sessions was that it's just that God, you know, um when I made him first priority, like my laundry list, ooh, excuse me. My laundry list of things that I had to do that I thought were priority, he helped me to um, recategorize things 
and showed me what other priorities were. Like when he was first priority, he showed me what really everything else that followed after him was whether or not it was priority. Hopefully that makes sense. But I would, man, I tell you, it eventually led to like where I was spending, you know, a few minutes to hours. So because I would just, you know, he gave me a teaching gift. He also um, put a seer gift me. So I, I was just searching the scriptures and they were, they, it turned into like days of just meeting with him. And this actually happened when I was conveniently laid off, um, conveniently laid off from my former employer. So where it involved flying, but nonetheless, I was injured. <laughs> Never mind. That's another topic. That's another topic. But it's all working together for my good because the Holy Spirit is making intercession and doing what the Holy Spirit does and knew how this is going to all work together for my good. So this is what I do now. This is what I do. I work from home. I do the works and the assignments that he gives me on a daily basis, um, just doing the work. And it all started with making him first priority. Um at least showing him that I want to, and, and I was like, it's not by, because I'm doing this, that God is, is I think God is like, it, cause he was blessing me beforehand. Like he was just with me beforehand. But I, I do, I think that, that somehow God is um, honoring. I don't, he is, I, I just like, I'm, I'm open to hear him clearly and I'm open to hear him more as a result of, of just making that time for him first. And because um, he's not like he wasn't always speaking. He wasn't speaking to me before. It's just that I had too much wax or too many things going on, too many other things that were priority to me that were happening that um, that I just just couldn't pick up when he was talking, you know, like I couldn't really hear that still small voice. So I I um. I, I really like this formula and this 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 way of doing business with God or his kingdom way, you know, and how he lives and how he provides for us here on earth and how he lives in us and through us here on earth. So I am I was a riff. Actually, I that was a riff. I, I was gonna just share some stuff with you. So and I'm not gonna be long, just try to be very brief, but I was just going reflecting back on some of the time that I spent with him um, back in April. I was looking at some of my notes. This is like my dream journal and vision journal and all that stuff. The things that the God has shown me or that I, you know, I hear him talking to me about. I tried to share those things. And then so earlier today um, in our in our fellowship, I was also looking at this. Holy Spirit speaks in so many ways. And Valerie, this is something from Valerie Burton. Love her, love her, love her, love her. Valerie Burton is is just dynamic. I love reading her stories and her testimony. We kind of have a similar walk in life and how we've, she's kind of a sister. She is a sister in my head. Um, she's not only a sister in Christ, but she's a sister in my head uh, and, a, and a friend in my head as well. But um, but one of the questions that she she's really good with like, really making you conquer or face those nasty questions and face um, what's really holding you back or face that. So, um, and sometimes I fall off the wagon and she's a great coach to help put you back on. God used her, you know, he also uses her to speak to me as well. So one of the things, she, I was doing her conquering your excuses and one of the things that really stood out Oh, wow. She first question was, what is your excuse? Um, what does this excuse give you permission to do or not to do? And then if you could no longer use this excuse, what would you do instead? And um, and then I wrote that down and then she's like, well, why won't you just do that now? And so, well, I have to <clears throat> admit that my excuse, excuse me about to see my foot, my toe. Okay. So I have to admit that my excuse was that you know for me not posting preaching those kinds of things like as i get these unctionings has been one that my house i feel like i have to clean my house like i'm a person who feels like all of my chores have to be completed before i do anything i'm one of those people 
And so, um, and so I've been on this Marie Kondo journey of, of trying to just clear everything. And I pretty much cleared everything. I just have probably like one more section left. But um, even when I go camping, my friends would make fun of me and they would say things like, oh, Holiday can't go out to the beach right now because she has to do her chores. I'm out camping. I'm in the woods or we're at the beach, whatever the case is. And I still feel this notion that I have to do chores before I do any work, like any good work. So uh, <laughs> do anything fun or worth that I want to do or any work that I want to do. So um, I don't know if it's a military thing or if it's just something that, you know, a socialized thing, how I was socialized as a young girl or I just don't know what it is, but I talked to my mom yesterday, who's also a pastor of mine. And she is, um, and she encouraged me. She was like, you know what? Why don't you just, coming from the woman who is a, a, a neat person as well, who does this, like she's always cleaning. She's always organizing and doing something um, in her house. You call her Saturday and this is what she's doing. So, So coming from her, she was like, you know what? Why don't you just go ahead and do the work and just and just and you know I'm not gonna just go ahead and record your stuff and 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 don't worry about the house being cleaned or whatever because it's always gonna be something. That's what she said to me, yo. And so I'm doing it. It's kind of weird, but I'm doing it. So and then and then he and then this morning, Holy Spirit helped me with Valerie Burton again with her word, um, with her tough questions. Um, asking me, you know, what is your excuse? And my excuse was my house is, I always feel like I have to make sure I have a perfectly cleaned house before I do anything. Mm. I don't know. There is, um, mm, I don't know. There may be a condition for that, but God help me through this. And he will. Um, he's helping me now because I'm conquering this, this thing that's stopping me from recording and, um, and sharing with you. So quarantine style, whether or not my face is made up and my hair is done or any of those things. Like I'm still in my jammies. You know what? We were going to do, um, at my church, we we're going to do like a jammy fellowship, a women's jammy fellowship. And at first I thought, oh, that's a little like thousands of women coming together on, <clears throat> on a Saturday morning in their pajamas in a clean way, you know, no negligees or anything like that. But I was like, uh, I don't want to do it. But look, thanks to Corona, <laughs> Corona and COVID-19, we're doing it. Um, so yeah, I'm still in my jammies. But nonetheless, uh, let's 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 just let's dive in. So this is me conquering my 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 excuse and um and sharing with you. Um, but God has been so amazing and good. He has, he has, he has. And so I thank him for his grace even in this because I've been sloth and slack concerning um, doing some of this, doing his work. So um, this is what he gave me. He woke up one morning. We woke up one morning and um, what was it? On the 10th, yeah, on the 10th of April, I woke up with this in mind and I began to just write, 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 you know, and I hope it's something that would encourage you because it encouraged me. The Holy Spirit just gave me then. I just start writing. He, he gave me, I'm a writer. So journalism, hence media, communications. He's always kept me in that career field. So um, dealing with people, public affairs. Yeah, that stuff. But some, for whatever reason, I'm not in it right now. Like um, technically in it where people are um, paying me on a steady rate for it. It's occasionally they pay me, depending on the projects and the assignments. But God is up to something, and my trust is in him. Not you, man, but him. He uses men, but him. So I'm in this different season. But nonetheless, Holy Spirit woke me up, and this is what I have from him. So I'll just read it. This is the 10th of April, and I should have. this is when I actually should have been recording it and sharing this with you on the 10th of April. So forgive me. Um, thank God for grace and mercy. It's not count it towards me going to hell or anything like that. So I love being his daughter, his child. He's so good and kind to us. Okay. So April 10th, this is what I said, or this is what was in my spirit. Like it was, I was just writing. I was writing really fast. So I may miss some of this stuff. The gift you have is to be used now. Oh, and this was recorded at 957 on good Friday of all days on the 10th. This is what he gave me on a good Friday. The gift you have is to be used now. 
It's to be used now. Whatever gift you have, it's to be used now. It evolves when used. Stir it up. It grows when you stir your gift up. It's meant for now. Our faith is a now faith. Whether little or greater, prophesy according to the awesomeness According to the, as I'm saying that, oh, prophesy according to the, I think I wrote awesomeness. That's what it is. Yeah. The awesome, maybe that's what I'm saying. Prophesy according to the awesomeness of faith or the measure. No, it's measure. Wow. Awesome and measure. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. So um, it, it, it says, it's meant to so your gift, whatever God's giving you, whatever spiritual gift he's giving you, Holy Spirit is dropped in you, dropped on you, whatever, you know, when you're, you're, you're influenced to prophesy, whatever it is, like to encourage your word, whatever it is, it's always going to line up with the character of God, the nature of God. And that's supposed to be used now, not later. I'm a later, like, Ooh, that's good. Let's use that. Let's save some for later. But when later comes, there'll be a new thing you know there'll be like a new thing so let's not say there's a candy used to be like now and later now and later i love eating that candy i think it's still it's still around um now and later now and later but um you know some of us live like that i'm one of them you know gotta give me something i'm like i'm gonna save it for later but really the faith is where whatever he gives you oftentimes if he's giving you a word to say or to speak or something to do it's for that now season it's for now um can you think about like if I was that person and I am that yeah I did this like <sighs> who would hold on to buy CDs and then keep them packaged and never pull them out to listen to them or play them in the now that I was supposed to use them and I'm waiting for the now here we are in 2020 I'm like oh yeah when I was thinking in that now back then and I was like oh I'm gonna save it for later a good time a better time the better time never comes because the better time brought better options. <laughs> so um, in the later, it brought better options. So it's like we're doing MP3s and digital music now instead. And I still listen to CDs, but it was that music that, that they came out with. It was for that season, for, for that now and what people needed to hear at that time. So I'm like, why am I keeping it packaged and for something for like, even when I cook, I like to save things. I always save that last thing, you know, that last, um, last piece of cheese, last drop of milk. Like, what's up with that? I need deliverance. Those of you pray for me and pray with me because I really do. I need to stop saving stuff for later, just in case. Deliver me from that, Father. Like, Father, help me with that. So um, those of you that know the Lord and have an ear to ear, um, pray for me in that, please, because... I need it. I really do. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is for me. Like the Holy Spirit was giving this to me, but I'm thinking like this is what we need to I need to also be sharing with my other brothers and sisters and cousins as well. So here we go. So it's meant so our faith is meant for now, and our faith is now faith. As a believer in Christ, it is now faith. All right. Whether little or greater, prophesy according to the measure of faith. So whether you have great faith or little faith, you can use your gift and talent to, you know, to just grow in your faith and to grow in the gift that he's got you because you're supposed to stir up the gift stir it up and use it and exercise it whatever gift the holy spirit and you're not doing it alone you're doing it with the help of the holy spirit don't let the flesh talk you or quench the spirit don't let your soul or flesh quench the spirit so do it um whatever father gives you do it now give it in a now season okay so let's see go prophesy so whatever can you imagine okay so prophesy according to the measure of faith let me finish that sentence that was measure that's the word measure that i thought was awesome um can you imagine if you never used vinyl cassette cd oh i just went over that example waiting for the best time to use it unwrap it the time it was being used was when you had it <laughs> That's so funny. I wrote this in the tin. I didn't realize I was going to say that again, but that's pretty cool. It was a means to accomplish a goal or a, miss, a mission 
for the then now season or for the then now. The now word, the now deed is what I'm calling it. You have a now gift. Stir it up. Your faith has made you whole and go your way. This is quoted by Jesus quite often in the New Testament. He would tell um, the leper, he told the woman with the issue of blood. Um, uh, let's see, he would tell the blind man that like the the paraplegic um, that was lifted into the, the what is that, the, the roof when he was preaching, lifted down, his friends lifted him down into uh, through the roof when he was preaching. So that's very interesting. That, that statement always, it, it, it's profound to me and it, it confounds me in the, in the fact that he would always tell people that your faith has made you whole go your way. And if Jesus is saying this, like even with the 10, remember the 10, um, the 10 lepers? Yeah, that he healed. He told them to go show themselves to the priest. And, um, and as they were walking, they were healed. As they were walking, they were healed. As they were walking, they were healed. As they were walking, 10 of these human beings who had all these boils and nasty looking things and just didn't, weren't pleasant to look upon. All these 10 human beings are walking to go show themselves. They still had these boils on them and oh, covered with scabs. Like, well, God didn't give me, God bless nurses, doctors, people that are in the medical field, anybody that's in like the helps field when it comes to the med. He didn't give me that. He gave me words. But because it's just like, I don't have the stomach for it. So, um, Oh, God, grace. So people there love that. They just, wow, that's amazing, though. Which is even further proves that we all have parts of him in us. Like, nobody gets it all. We all get these parts. Like, that one person, there's that person who's like, oh, oh, my God, that's ugly to something or just it turns other people's off. And that there's that one person who's, like, running to us. Like, I'm the one. I'm the solution for it. I, I love this stuff, and I can handle it. That's like, that's like the, the, the glory of God, you know? Because he gives us all a part of himself to help each other, to be solutions for each other. So yeah, yeah. So go back to that that part. Like your faith has made you whole. So when those 10 lepers were walking and then one, and then it was one that returned back to Jesus to show him and to thank him that he realized, oh my God, what? For real? 